Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Corporate Culture Shapes B2B Content Marketing. So if you're listening to this today, that probably means that you've either thought about getting involved with B2B content marketing, or perhaps you've tried it, and maybe things aren't quite going the way that you wanted them to go, and, and you just kind of want some good ideas of, of how to maybe improve what you're doing. So that's what we're going to be talking about over the next 30 minutes, uh, really trying to help those of you who are just starting out give you some good ideas, and those of you that have started it already to help you improve uh, and improve performance on what you're already doing. So that should be the, the audience for today's webinar. A little bit about myself. My name is Greta Pa Kerner. And I have uh, 20 plus years of marketing experience. So a, a lot of that's been in both the United States, Europe, and the UK with a bit in Asia. Now what I do now is I take that experience I've used and I work as an independent uh, consultant. I'm here based in London, although the accent might be a little bit um, misleading because it's from the, North America. So I, I mostly work, take that expertise I've learned, and I help companies, small, medium, large, kind of modernize their marketing. So I work as a consultant for the, uh, I work as a course director for the Chartered Institute of Marketing. I go into companies on their behalf, and I help kind of uh, work out some marketing issues that companies may have. I also work with um, institutions that biz business folks and higher institutions. We recently completed an, um, producing an online MBA for a higher education institution. It's going to be their distance learning module. So that's kind of what I do, and that's why I believe that uh, what I have to say might ring true and, and have some credibility behind that. Most of what I've learned about this whole B2B uh, content marketing concept actually comes before I started telling people and teaching people about it. It comes from when I worked as a managing director for an affiliate marketing agency. And at the same time, I was also put in charge of being the global head of marketing for the, the agency uh, across many different countries. So that's where I really had to employ this concept of B2B content marketing um, to help gain and garner you know, new, new uh, business for, for the company. So I believe that set the, the stone, the, the foundation for what I'm going to be talking to you about this afternoon. So what we're going to talk about here. First, we'll start at what is B2B content marketing. If you're listening to this webinar, you probably have a basic idea of what it is and why is it important. We'll talk a bit about something called personas and customer journeys. It's a term you may or may not have heard of, but it's an important concept, that uh, kind of the evolution that's happened in marketing. And you'll, you'll kind of appreciate why you believe it's important for this to happen. Then we'll talk about how you can seed content, this content marketing, how, how you get that content out there, how you should measure success, importantly then the resources needed, that's where the whole corporate culture side of things fits in neatly into this, and then we'll just talk a bit about the key <clears throat> success factors in it. So let's start with what is B2B content marketing. This is a great infographic uh, provided by Smart Insights. What it does, it really goes through and talks about different pieces of, of content that could be formed. And I wanted to show you sort of in a visual way um, some various types of content marketing. So we have things like white papers, kind of journalism, viral content, infographics, social blogs, industry new, news, and so forth. So this kind of gives you a smattering, an overview, a kind of a cocktail menu of what is available. But what I wanted to do is not just show you these, but I wanted to categorize them and help you make some sense out, out of them so that you can better understand what's probably right for you and what's right for your organization. So thinking about it, what is B2B content marketing? So on one side, we have 
<clears throat> something to entertain. So it's content that's meant to, it's kind of simple, almost eye and ear candy, right? Not really anything too heavy or too deep. And then you have something to educate so that, again, it gets a bit more deeper. Again, something that's a bit passive, so you're learning, you're educating, uh, a bit more than just candy, so it might be the, the main course with it. And then really why a lot of companies want to do content marketing, particularly in the business-to-business -business or B2B space, is to convince to be seen as a thought leader and truly make somebody or some organization take action, right? So not just passively do something, but actively do something. So just going through this whole uh, uh, spectrum again, <clears throat> back to entertainment, we have things like memes and games, it could be competitions, viral videos, quizzes. So very light content, not anything too deep or too profound. You know, something that someone would do and then forget about probably right afterwards. Something that they might find silly, forward on, and then the thought leaves their brain. So they're not going to deeply think about that. The next group is the educate group, right? It's things like the infographics on the lighter side, just like what I had showed you before. Blogs fall into that. And then we start getting a bit meatier with press releases, you know, more words, more content, more ideas. And then we have things like webinars, what we're on today. And then moving along, we, have, we get even a bit deeper with something like a white paper. Moving along then, again, in terms of depth of information, uh, commitment in time, energy, and so forth and so on from the audience increases as well. It's things like case studies, how-to videos, customer feedback, so actually looking at what other customers have said, forums, you know, reading what other people, uh, users have said about this product or service, and then ratings, again, going back to that. So the purpose behind that is to then convince them. As you can see now, it, it uh, moves from left to right, from pretty much awareness and, and lightheartedness to, uh, you know, all the way through the funnel to if it was an e-commerce kind of business, it would be to purchase. If it's not an e-commerce uh, company and, and perhaps what you do is um, sell uh, ideas or services, it might be something the, the convince stage or the purchase might be downloading uh, 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 some information. It might be at requesting a demo or some kind of action that would be taken. So this is the way I like to kind of group <clears throat> together the kind of B2B content that you can find out there. And so you need to really think for yourself and your organization, where on the spectrum do you want to be placed? Are you entertaining? Are you educating? Or are you trying to convince? So that's one of the first questions that you should have in the back of your mind. What we're going to do now over the next series of um, slides <laughs> is just show you some examples of, of different kinds of content because perhaps you've always thought of B2B content as sort of you know, unidimensional or maybe you know, a couple dimensions but, but not have thought of the full suite of content that is actually available to you. So looking at this, we could start with something as simple as a meme. Uh, you know, a meme is a virally transmitted cultural symbol or social idea. This one is for Dos Equis, the most interesting man in the world. Again, very lighthearted, very silly, something you would might, you know, go ha, 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 look at and then forget about or maybe pass on. But again, it's a bit of branding for Dos Equis. It probably wouldn't make you run out and buy uh, Dos Equis beer, but it might make you think about that brand in a different way. Viral video. Videos are fantastic and increasingly more popular as the screen sizes of our, you know, our mobile phones has increased and <coughs> our bandwidth, you know, 4G and 5G, as that's evolving, we're able to now, you know, download data much more efficiently and watch videos. So again, a very, very effective content medium for you to consider. And it's a really great medium for kind of the on-the-go viewers, you know, again, to engage and entertain. I don't think you'd sit there and want to watch something too heavy for too long. 
So keep that in mind if your content actually ends up being a bit heavy and a bit long-winded. Then we move on to something called that I call light education. That's things like infographics and drawing videos. So infographics, they convey complicated ideas in an easy to understand format, right? Because it's very visual. And this is perfect for people that learn through images, right? People that like to see stuff to, in order to learn, right? So you cannot uh, just have to read the words, but you can you see a symbol or a picture that relates to it. And you would find that this is a very effective method for, for certain kind of learners and certain kind of content. The next one is a whiteboard explainer video. And what, these are very good at turning tough topics into learning sessions. So this is the one I found about life insurance. And you know, everybody loves to watch sketching and the whole you know, sketching that goes into it. And it's a very, very effective way of taking a kind of maybe a heavy, deep, or boring topic and making it a little bit more interesting. And you would probably find that your audience would sit through kind of heavy content or deep, boring content longer if you're using something like this kind of explainer sketching videos <laughs> rather than if you were just to sit there and talk to them in a talking head format, I suppose you might say. Moving on in the education space, it's really about learning more about a subject, so a deeper dive into a subject. So again, this is content that you're going to be putting out there, and when an audience, a person or a company, wants to learn more about something, they will then choose this content. So they will find it, they will choose it, and then they will download it. So a guide is a great way of doing that. That's sort of the lighter end of the, you know, the information and the, um, the, the education side of things. But again, a guide is a fantastic way of doing that. Then moving on to a bit deeper kind of information would be a white paper where you're going to, in a white paper, you, you talk a lot um, more in depth about a narrower subject. So it's narrow and deep, I suppose, is the best way of saying that. So again, it's about uh, learning about a subject. And again, where we are today, <clears throat> education, learning more about a subject, webinars, a fantastic way of doing that. Again, webinars are not only good for the actual live time that, that it's happening, as it is right now, we're, we're recording this live, but it's also, it lives on. It lives on in YouTube. It lives on on corporate websites where customers or users can go and access it at a later date. So that's, that's some of the value that you can see within a webinar. So it's not just on the day of, but it's kind of the legacy that goes with it. So that gave you an overview of the different kinds, you know, just a general you know, idea of the gamut that's out there in terms of content marketing. And the next question is, well, why is B2B content marketing important? You know, why are we dealing with this? Because more and more budgets are being spent <coughs> on content marketing, especially in the business-to-business -business space. Well, this is why. First of all, 70% of customers prefer content over ads. So they see this as the most important way of learning information. So rather than blasting them with display advertising, um, providing content is a very effective tool. 67% of business-to-business -business buyers rely more on this content to make their purchases. So it's kind of the, the shape, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but the, the shape of the sales funnel has changed over the years with the you know, advent of the internet and the importance the increasing importance of you know, finding information, understanding things to the nth degree before making a decision. We're now able to do that. So what that means is that content, that 67% of buyers, so that's well over half, rely on this type of content, this materials that are being produced by businesses to, um, to better understand, better inform them before making their decision. And the last point I'd like to make on this slide is the fact that today it's very true that the customers are in charge. There's more information is in their control. 
So they can, they're in the driver's seat. This is this concept of this inbound marketing. They're pulling in what they want. So the customers are in charge, and they're pulling in the data, the information, the materials that they want. Your job as a marketer is to make relevant content available and easily accessible to them so that they can then pull that information to themselves. So moving on, more reasons why it is important is that, again, the prospect in today's world, is, as you well know, especially with, with complicated business-to-business -business sales, you know, complex sales, the prospect doesn't pick up a phone or call a vendor until he or she is sure that, that the product that they have, the product or the service that they're interested in. So they are very much doing their homework before they even get on the phone. So it's, it's a matter of getting that information, getting that knowledge, educating oneself before even then talking to the vendor that, and then the salesperson tries to sway you know, the, the, the person that will be buying either way. But in, by and large, they've already made a very informed decision in their mind about what's good or what's bad about this based on the information that's available out there on, on the web. So that leads to the next point. The fact that a large part of the sales cycle now falls into the marketer's area of responsibility. So more and more pressure is put on this front end of the funnel, on the marketing side of things. As the next point says, the B2B marketer is shifted from supporting sales to owning a substantial portion of that buyer's journey. Because by the time that the salesperson probably even knows that this company is interested in this product, the company or the individual has done a lot of research and has looked through a lot of content and is very well informed up into, until that point. So again, it's a shift in what, what's demanded and what's required from the B2B marketing department. So this was a, content, a B2B content marketing survey done by Forrester. And I wanted to share it with you because I found the um, findings I thought were pretty interesting. Uh, first of all, content marketing is the most popular and most effective marketing tactic. So they surveyed you know, lots and lots of C, C, uh, uh, CMOs out there and talked to them. And, and, and this, is the kind, this is the result of that survey that they did. So they, they took the information, and these are the findings that they found. So again, content marketing is the most popular and effective marketing tactic that companies are using. 87% say that they fail to develop compelling content. So while it's important, well, 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 well over three quarters of them believe that they're failing to develop compelling content. So they're just creating junk, right, that's out there. So that's a big issue, and that's something that definitely needs to be addressed. So really, the recommendations that this, this survey came up with was, was that was to put content investment in front of other tactics. So invest in content. If you're going to be playing in the content space, which a lot of companies in the B2B, you know, if you're in B2B marketing, you're almost being forced into the content marketing space, not by your choice, but by your customer's choice, because they're doing that front end research in the buying journey. So they're going to be searching for uh, answers so it's up to you to decide if you're going to be providing those answers to them. So really, a company needs to put that content investment in front of other type of tactics because it's one that's very important for them. So again, another recommendation would be to adopt a centralized asset management and measurement system. So what happens is especially bigger companies or as companies grow and they're growing rapidly, that all the assets are everywhere and it's, it's just a mess. So it absolutely should be centralized so that companies know what content they have, what assets they have available, and how they're measuring success, who's measuring what and how is that being done. Uh, the last recommendation would be to experiment with new content types. As the world's evolving and as us as consumers are changing our, our buying behaviors, um, what does that mean? Well, it means perhaps playing with the type of content that is being developed. Perhaps maybe it means doing a, a few less white papers and a few more videos or how-to videos or doing thing, uh, more 
trying YouTube out when perhaps before you didn't. So this is this is might be tough to read, but the, the point I wanted to show you here is this was the marketing survey that was done by Forrester talking about the effectiveness of B2B tactics. And surprisingly, this well, I think the most like surprising fact about this whole survey is that nothing, no tactic, no B2B marketing tactic on here increase, was above 50%. So above the line means that more than 50% of people thought it was effective. So, you know, everybody thinks not anything's particularly great out there, but it looks like the worst, uh, or the, one of the best of the worst is, is in fact content marketing. It's right up there on the top right corner. So what this shows you is that there is, a, you know, the B2B marketers don't think everything, the tactics they're using are really that effective, but of the ones that they're doing, the most important and effective one is, in fact, content marketing. And this is interesting because this shows you the different kind of uh, budget spend that they have. And the two different colors uh, talk about, you know, what do they think is, you know, effective in actually making sales and what's good in brand building. And you'll notice the, the idea of content marketing is third right there. So 12% of their budgets are going to it. So, so it's a significant portion of marketers' budgets are going to it. I mean, it's on the top three of the list right there. So significant budgets are going to it. Yet, as I showed you in the slide before, they don't feel that they're being very effective with it. So there's a bit of a mismatch, almost like their marketers are B2B marketers are sort of throwing money at something, but they don't necessarily think that it's actually producing the results that they wanted as tactics that it has to. And I believe the reason why they did, it's not, and that's what we're going to talk about for the rest of this webinar, is because I don't think people are taking it serious enough. Companies, the corporate culture is not doesn't have it fully ingrained from the top leadership down, and also I believe that companies uh, and 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 corporations are not really considering the persona, the people that they're actually selling to, and really putting themselves in the shoes of that buyer and walking through customer journeys about how customers go about finding information, becoming aware of a product or service, really go out seeking information, who influences them in their decision, who influences where they go to get that information, what are the touch points, right? What are the touch points that, that a brand or a company can influence along those buyer, that buyer-customer journey? So if you had a better understanding of who you're trying to sell, sell to, Understanding those touch points and the, the, the journey in which the, the, the possible journeys, because there's more than one customer, there's more than one persona, there's more than one customer journey. But by understanding and starting with that and building content around that to think about how are you going to increase awareness of these personas, how are you going to educate these personas, these people, and how are you going to convert these? So building content based on that cycle, that is from awareness through to education to conversion, really thinking through what content is being created based on the actual persona, understanding who they are. If it, you took a very a methodical approach and built up your editorial calendar, built up your content that you're going to be using, using something like this simple grid, I bet you, you'll find that you'll be much more targeted and much more effective in your content, B2B content marketing. So this is another, um, the next few slides just are some more surveys that are done just to show you that, that, that what I just said, that people aren't doing what they should, what, what, what they really need to be doing. So they're wasting budget, and they're not feeling that it's very, very effective, but they find that they're not doing their work beforehand. So what this is, is how B2B marketers target their audience. So 39% say they do not target their audience. So again, not looking at the personas, not doing anything, just kind of shooting out materials out there, just throwing it on the internet in a haphazard way. And then um, the, the yellow one is only using personas, right? So 
uh, 26% only use personas, and then 9% use only the concept of buyer's customer journey. It's the 28%, the orange one, so only 28% of these B2B marketers that were um, surveyed use both personas and a buyer's journey in order to develop their content. So again, it's absolutely important, and it's, it's shocking to see that almost three quarters of the B2B marketers are not using both their personas and this idea of these customer journeys to help them develop effective content for, for their marketing. Also, another suggestion would be to develop an editorial calendar for each persona. So we had talked about awareness, education, and conversion. Well, think about what should you be doing? Are there certain months that you should be doing certain things? You know, a lot of your products or services that you sell or promote uh, might be cyclical or might be seasonal. What is it? So when do you want to talk to them? Is it based around the seasons? Is it based around selling times? Is it based around climate? What is it? But develop an editorial calendar for each of those personas. Think about what you want to say to them. So, you know, who, what's the, the topic, right? What you want to say, and what platform do you think are the best ones to promote or push out that message to that audience. So really having a, a concentrated view of it is very important. Another aspect that's super important is to seed the content. So it's one thing to create, create fantastic content, right? It's one thing to create amazing stuff that's super interesting and very um, educational or, <laughs> or very entertaining, whatever it may be. But it's very important then to see that content, get that content out there so that it can be found by your audience, whoever your persona is. So again, great content is important, but consumers, they need to be able to find it, right? So your job as a marketer, first of all, is to figure out your personas, right? Figure out who your customers are. Then you have to find out where they go to find their information. Remember the whole customer journey, the buyer journey? Where do they go to find it? And then you need to promote your content in those channels. So it's, it's pretty much that simple, really. It's just the legwork that has to be done. So that might mean you may have to pay for display advertising or you may have to buy an email list. These are some realities you might have to do. But that's okay if you're doing it uh, surgically rather than just sort of spreading it around. So some places that you know, I could suggest that you uh, promote your content and some ideas would be at conferences or shows, you know, especially if that's one of the very important uh, B2B tactics, marketing tactics that you use. Maybe an online forum or a group. Um, you know, for some brands and services, this would be more effective than others. Through social media, and then when I say social media, I'm being sort of vague. You'd have to decide which ones and when you would do that because it's not just picking the right social media platform, but also when you're posting and engaging with that. Email or something called influencer marketing. I don't know how many of you know influencer marketing, but it's paying somebody who has a fantastic um, uh, audience or a following that is very uh, aligned with your product or your service. So paying that person to promote your products so they can help seed your material, your content out there. Always, of course, for a price. And there's agencies that work with influencer marketing people that can marry up the two together. Something else I want you to consider is taking LinkedIn seriously. So this is not just for the small mom and pop companies, but rather big ones too. All size companies, small, medium, large, really should take LinkedIn seriously because it is a very effective way of communicating and talking and being seen as a market or a thought leader in it. So it's important to post in the write an article section that you, uh, on your individual ones. Perhaps it could be somebody high up within the company that, that posts that article. Then it's important to join groups and post that same article in the group. So you share the link from the post that the, your article that you've written within LinkedIn, you share that in various groups. And then if you have your employees share the post too, then you'll get a little viral thing going with, with your content on LinkedIn. And again, it's a very important way of um, 
being perceived as a uh, thought leader. And I don't think people take uh, enough companies take LinkedIn seriously enough. Now back to kind of uh, feeding content. This is an example I just wanted to show you of paid email marketing. So again, you know, you might have to pay for things like this, where where it would be an ad that would show up on the top of Gmail saying, you know, hey, download this. And if it's something that uh, our, our, the customer, because it's a, obviously a targeted um, ad, if it's a, or if it's something that the person wants, then they'll download it, and, and if it's not, then they'll just ignore it. So think about placing doing a paid email marketing with that. So we've talked about seeding and the importance of it. You know, you might have to pay this, pay that. But interestingly, most customers or, or clients or prospects like to find content themselves. They like to go out there. So 43% say that online ads are not personalized to their interests. So they feel like they're kind of getting spammed out there. Not quite half, but 43% say that they're kind of being spammed. 62%, and this is the interesting one, say that content they discover themselves is personalized. So they feel that they're finding something for themselves. So they are feeling that it's theirs. They feel it's personal to them. They're taking a bit of ownership. It's, it's, you're now inside their circle, inside their bubble, 62% of them. 95% take action to avoid ads. So they just don't want to be bothered by people spamming them. And then 61% say that even if content is customized, they still prefer to find it on their own. So whilst it might be um, customized, they want to go out there and they want to feel ownership of it and find it themselves. So again, they're looking for something, you just have to be available for them to find it. And that's the way that most prospects prefer it. And 46% say content they find on their own influences their purchasing decision. So really, finding the content sounds key, right? Because 61% of uh, customers really want to find that on their own by going out there. So it's very important. This might not be your job. It might be someone else's within uh, the marketing department or in the IT department in your company, but it's very important that your website is SEO optimized, right? So search engine optimized. So this gives you a few things that you need to do over the next few slides. So it's a matter of having a user-friendly um, URL, so not some weird thing, but it has to have a very uh, specific name. And parting your title tag, you have to start with a key, your keyword, put your keyword in your title tag. Um, add my, my, excuse me, add modifiers to your title, add those, you know, best, guide, review, the, the year in it. So add those to your title with them. And then, of course, wrap your title in a tag, right? Use multimedia, so interesting pictures. Pictures, you know, are super important. Video, pictures, add the visual content there. Again, wrap subheadings and tags. And make sure that your keywords are in your first 100 words of whatever you're writing on, on your website. So again, these, what, make sure you understand what the keywords are that people would be searching and to find you and the content you have, and make sure that that's included in those first 100 words. Again, your, your website, obviously, I think you all know this by now, should be a responsive design that makes your S go up in the SEO rankings. Uh, use outbound links on your website, so have the outbound ones, as well as having internal links inside your website. Again, boost site speed, you know, and make sure that your keywords are within the body of text, not overly oppressive, so it's a bad customer experience, but it's a good user experience by sprinkling those keywords in. Again, your images uh, need to be optimized with that, and then again, by including things like social sharing buttons and also making sure that the content you provide is actually long, you know, the longer, the deeper, the better it is. So again, things like this um, will make you, your page more findable, I suppose. So really, more, more so than anything, make sure not only do you create great content, but that you then go and make sure it's easily being able to be found whether that's you seeding it out there, but also importantly to have it SE, your website being SEO optimized. 
search engine optimized with that. And again, once you have all this fantastic content, don't forget to repurpose it. You can use it over and over again by just maybe changing a few things or, or uh, you know, changing kind of the, the formatting or how it's used or what it's being used for or updating some data. And this just shows you the amount of marketers who don't actually end up using it, uh, repurposing theirs. And it looks like actually only 9% always recycle or reuse it. And then 18% seldom do. So it's a best practice that really is not being followed in the B2B space. So something for you to consider. So now measuring success. So it's very important to, to focus on the idea of conversions, right? And there's really two kinds of conversions that you can have when you're thinking about content marketing, business to business content marketing. You can have a macro conversion, which would be something you know, bigger, like completing a transaction, filling out a form, buying something, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of a macro conversion. But don't forget that there's micro conversions, and that success also comes by having micro conversions, right? So it might be clicking on a product page, it might be watching a video, or some kind of um, some tip that this, that this customer, this prospect is engaged with your product. So really, traffic, when we look at traffic as a measure of success, you know, you should not really focus overall on that. You know, just having traffic is not, you know, that critical because it could be poor traffic that goes in. So not all traffic is equal, if you think about it. So you have kind of your, your unengaged traffic, right? So the visitor comes on and bounces right off. You have the interested one in terms of visitors they don't bounce, but they just might look at a few pages, but they're not really, you know, ah, this is interesting, but then they're gone. Then you have your engaged ones that do these micro conversions. So they're showing a level of engagement. And then you have the converted that complete these macro conversions. So that's really important. And you should also consider the type of traffic you have by device or demographic that's going into it. So think about, and also you have to remember, something about content marketing, and this is really a tough thing to sell into to key, uh, you know, senior management, especially when you're trying to get budget, right, get marketing budget. In effect, really, content marketing is not going to help you. It's not going to be the last thing that helps you close the deal. It's very difficult to actually close a deal based on content marketing, but rather it assists in the conversion. So it's helping at that kind of the front end of the sales cycle. Whatever the conversion is, it's helping kind of in that front end to build, you know, like and trust. It's about building, educating, and, and building up a relationship with this prospect. So remember that it will probably assist in the conversion, but it probably won't be 100% attributable. And so this is something that you need to think about when you're trying to battle for budget for content marketing. This is an example here I want to show you, just you know, searching for wallpaper for decorating. So uh, someone might search, uh, someone that's redoing their house might search for wallpaper, and then they might read a blog about how to brighten your room with wallpaper, but then they might then see a display ad, and they might click on that display ad, and that might bring them, and they might buy something online, or more likely they might go in-store to look at it and see it and, and have a good understanding of it. So again, it's in here, it's aiding in the conversion, but it's not the kind of the thing that's 100% attributable to it. But also, saying that, don't forget any excuse you can have to have a call to action. So don't forget that sales call to action because you are helping push the sale through or push this conversion. You might not be the one, you know, content marketing might not be entirely attributable, but don't miss any opportunity you have to use it as an opportunity to speak to someone and find out if they're interested in converting and interested in buying. So make sure that you have something like this. It says, I'm interested in finding out more. Click here. And then that would go directly to your sales team. So don't forget about that. So the resources, the necessary resources for a successful program. You know, we've talked about, uh, you know, how important it is and people are throwing budget at it, but it just doesn't seem to be working. I don't know if companies and, and marketing departments really appreciate and understand the resources that are actually needed in order to make 
um, to, to make their content marketing program successful, right? So you need to have a content manager or strategist, right? Some of that is going to be managing this, thinking of what do we need, when do we need it, where, you know, creates that editorial calendar that, that we talked about. So that's kind of the job of it. Then you're probably going to need a subject matter expert, especially if you're in a very technical or complex sale. You or whoever the, the, um, the, mar the content marketing strategist is probably won't know the specifics and the details, and you'll need someone like a back office engineer or someone else to do that. So it's important to remember that you need buy-in from the subject matter expert, and they're going to have to stop doing their day job to help you do this, right? They're going to have to give you the information, the materials, maybe even write stuff that you need in order to be successful. So again, corporate culture, do you have those sub subject matter experts? Uh, corporate culture, are they, um, you know, have they bought into this? Do they understand this? Are their bosses recognizing that they're spending time on content marketing? So again, that, that goes back to how important this content, the culture is of this. You need a writer or producer. Even if the subject matter expert writes it, it probably has to be rewritten. Um, or someone has to write it to begin with, right? Or produce it. If it's a video or something, it has to be produced. So someone has to do it. Then there has to be a once over. You know, a lot of these things have to be edited because it might have originated from someone who's actually not that good at writing, might really understand the subject, but might, might not be able to add that sparkle or that polish that's needed on it. You might also need a graphic designer, particularly if you're creating something like an infographic or, or you know, anybody that you need to add the visuals with it. So that's the job of the graphic designer and the person to lay it out. Then you might need a social media manager, a publisher, to push this content out there, someone to get out and, and push this, this, um, this material along. So as you can see, the resources that are being needed are far more than uh, just you know, a content marketing manager, but it involves a lot of different aspects of a company. And this is perhaps the most important one, is having that advocate, having senior management buy into this. Because if, if the person, the content marketer, the subject matter expert, if all these people aren't recognized for what they're contributing to the company and their time that they're dedicating to this is not um, being properly um, you know, assessed or evaluated, then, then that's going to be a problem and people are going to get resentful and, and it's going to make creating content really tough. So you need to absolutely have an advocate. Senior management has to be bought into this. They are the number one most important part of this. They need to be involved. They need to help contribute. They need to highlight, recommend when, uh, when something's gone well. They need to, you know, really be the, the big salesperson, the cheerleader for, for the, the content that's being created. And then another thing you've got to think about is how much of this can you produce in-house and how much of it can be done by an agency. I would dare to say if your content is light and fluffy and kind of more entertaining, an agency can do that because they don't know your, your they don't need to know your company very well and they're just creating some fun fluff. But if you're getting really in-depth uh, information that's leading to a conversion, things that like uh, you know super in-depth detailed webinars or white papers or forums, well that has to be done in-house because the subject matter experts, uh, their role is increasingly more important as the content gets deeper and, and kind of more uh, on the right-hand side of that, that gamut, that spectrum that I showed you about. So corporate culture really will determine, and that's kind of the point of this, uh, this webinar as I'm starting to wrap this up, corporate culture will determine the success of your content marketing strategy. Absolutely, it's important. If it's not working in your company, have a good look at your corporate culture and decide if it's helping or hindering the evolution and the development of B2B content marketing within your organization. So as I had said before, you absolutely need senior leadership buy-in, carrot and stick, 
you know, they, you know, at, at company meetings that they highlight people that have, you know, contributed and what a great job they've done or, you know, some success that's happened with content marketing. They need to lead by example, and that means contributing in terms of writing things, doing blogs, so forth and so on. So again, senior leadership buy-in, very important. Then also, in order to have a successful content marketing program, it needs to be properly resourced. And that means people, that list of people that need to be involved, as I said about two slides ago, as well as budget. There needs to be some money put in to this. So those are really things to think about with that. Other key success factors. Really spend your effort on developing quality content. So quality content is probably the most important thing. Just, you know, don't even do it at all if it's not quality. Think about frequency. You should be fairly frequent, not enough to annoy people, but you have to be consistent and regular with the frequency of, of what you're producing. You have to establish your tone of voice. So your tone of voice, obviously, just like anything you're doing in marketing, should be reflective of your brand and the ethos of your company. So that should be carried through into your content that you're doing. You should also remember who you're targeting, your personas. That should be in the, the, the whole purpose of creating the materials is to be found by those people, those personas. So remember who they are and what their needs are, right? Remember that content marketing has many owners that go into it. So it's not just the content marketing manager. And then again, ultimately, senior management buy-in. Very, very important for that. Well, that's it for today. Um, I hope you found some nuggets of information in there that can help you. And again, uh, these, these slides will be made available if you'd like to watch them later on. And if you have any questions from the audience, uh, I, there's no questions that's been asked yet. If you have anything, feel free to ask them now. Otherwise, um, we will end this webinar. Okay, I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry. I think it looks like we are going to wrap this up. Thank you again for your time and good luck with your content marketing.